Hey everyone, it's Zinnia here, and today I wanted to show you part two of how to make a racing game on the phone. So here in part two, I'll show you how to make a timed race that starts and ends where you have to avoid other cars and score as many points as you can. So yeah, let's get started. So in part one of this series, we got to this point in our game where the car can drive along the road and collect coins. Now let's make it into a timed race. So for step one, let's add other cars on the road. I'm just gonna tap here and duplicate this car and now we have this car artwork in another sprite. And I'll get rid of this code because that's for the player's car. And we want this car to go driving down the road like this. And we can do that with very similar code to how we made the coin move in the last video. So if you want to see more detail on how I made that code, you can always watch that one. But basically we can have the car start up here and then use a repeat block to have it move to the bottom of the screen. And actually, to have it look like it's driving along the road, maybe I'll have it go at an angle, so let me just try that out. And I think that's pretty nice. We can put this inside a forever loop, and also have it start at a small size when it's up there, and then put a change size by two block inside this repeat loop so that the car gets bigger as it drives along. I'll attach it to the play button block, and then to add some randomness to when it drives by, we can make it hide and then wait a random amount of time before it shows. And one last thing I think would be fun to do with this car is let's make it change color by a random amount every time before it shows up so that now it sort of looks like it's a different car each time. Almost done with adding more cars, let's add another one on the other side of the road. So to do that, I'll just go here and duplicate this first car to create a second one. And how can we make it so that this car drives down this side of the road instead of this one. Well, the only thing you have to change is you can tap on this arrow within the move block because this is what's controlling what direction it's moving. And you can just drag it to go this direction. And so let's try that out. Okay, so we have the car that goes that way and we also have the car that goes that way. Okay, nice. So we have moving cars. Now for step two, let's add the ability to score points if you collect coins and lose points if you collide. So to make the player gain points when they collect a coin, we can go to the coin sprite and we have this block that says when the coin touches the car, hide and play a sound. And how about when this happens, we also increase the player's score by one. So to do that, you can go to the more blocks category and I'll drag out this change variable block and that will, you know, change the score by one. So I can just drag that and put it here. And so now let's test it out. My score increases every time I get a coin. Let me actually uh, set the score to zero when the game starts because, you know, at that point, you don't have any coins yet. Okay, nice. And to make the player lose points if they collide with another car, let's go over to one of the other car sprites and we can drag out another when touches block and we can say, when this car touches the player car, change variable score by negative one. And also let's have it play a sound. So I'm gonna drag out a play sound block and there's this one sound buzz that I really like. Here it is, because I think that kind of sounds like a car horn. So let's just try that out. I will see what happens if I collide with this car and there you go, it plays a sound. Now this one doesn't have that code yet. So to add this code to this other car, I can just long press on the code and then say copy script to this car. So let me try that as well. The real test is can I collide with this one? And yes, I can, there you go. Okay, nice. So we finished step one, which is adding moving cars. Now let's add step two, making it a timed race with a beginning and end. So to start making it a race, I will record a beloved countdown sound and remix it. So I'll just record that. And then I want this sound to play when the game starts. So I'll drag out a when play button pressed block and I'll go to the sound category and I'll play this recording one sound. And how about I also use the text block to show a countdown? So maybe I'll write like three, two, one, start with a few text blocks. I'm gonna change the colors a bit. So I want three, two, one, I'll add start. And I'll put some wait blocks in between and let's try it out. I'll attach it here and I'll tap play button. Oh, and you know, I need to make this play sound and continue. Otherwise it will wait until this sound finishes before it shows the text. Okay, let me try that. Okay, so. Okay, nice, that lines up pretty well. Now, how about we make it so that the car doesn't start moving until the race actually starts. And so how can we do that? Well, this code, this, you know, forever tilt to move, that's the code that makes the player start moving. And right now we have this start happening when the play button is pressed. But how about 
we use the same movement code, but instead of making the player start moving at the beginning of the game, we can make a message and call it start race. And we can send that message when we want the player to start moving. And then there's this block, when I receive the message start race, and we can put that on top of this code. And now the player won't start moving until it gets that message. So let's try that out. Okay, I'm tilting the device, but the car can't start moving until the game starts. So that seems pretty good. One quick thing, I think I'll send start race before we text start so that you can start moving right when you see the text start appear. And to fix the issue where these stripes on the road and coins are moving before the race has started, we can just search through all these sprites for every piece of code that should actually start when the race starts, not when the project starts. And we can throw away the when play button block and just put when I receive start race instead. So now these sprites will sort of wait until the race actually starts and then they'll start doing those things. Oh, okay, but one issue with that, we should make them hide when the game starts. So I'm gonna give them the code when play button hide. And I think I'll just give that to all of these sprites. And okay, let's try that out. So the game starts and now the objects start appearing. Oh, and I think we just need to make the stripe on the road show when the race starts. Okay, there we go. Now the stripe is back. Okay, so now we can start the race. Let's make it so that we can end the race. So how about we make it so that when the race starts, we'll start running a timer. And then after a certain amount of time, we'll have a finish line appear. So in the player car, I'll make that timer. So I can say, when I receive start race, I'll set a variable and I'll make a variable called time and we can start it at zero. And then we want to change this variable time by one, you know, once every second. And to do that, you could just drag out a forever loop and put it around it. If I click on it like that, uh, the time will increase very fast. But if I want it to increase once every second, I could just drag in a wait one second block. And now uh, there we go. The time is increasing more slowly. So I'll put that there and then that will start our timer. Honestly, I'm mostly using this time variable so that the player can see how much time they have in the race. And then you can decide in your game how long you want the race to be. You could make it a minute or two minutes or whatever you like. And to make the race end, we can have a finish line show up when the race is almost over. So I think I want my race to be about 15 seconds. And so when the race starts, I'll wait like 13 seconds. I'll send out a message and call it finish line. And then now we want the finish line to appear. So let's draw one. And I'm just gonna set the color to white and draw a very thin line. And then I'll put this where I want it to start. And at the beginning of the game, we want the finish line to hide. And then when it receives the message finish line, well, we want it to show up and I'll make it go to this location here. And then after it appears, we want it to move down the screen. So to have it do that, I can drag out another go to block. And instead of having it go here at lightning speed, I can make it go maybe at the slowest shoe. And so let's just try that out. So when finish line is received, it goes there. So that seems pretty good. And then at the same time that it's moving down, we also want it to be getting bigger because right now it's a very tiny finish line on this wide part of the road. And to make these two things happen at the same time, we can just drag out another when I receive finish line block. And in this block stack, we can put the code for changing size. So to make it change size, maybe I'll start the size at something like 100 at lightning speed. And then this block change size, if I put in change size by two, will make it slowly get bigger. How about I put this in a repeat block and then attach it under here. And if I have it repeat something like a hundred times, that will make it get quite a bit bigger. So to test out how these two stacks are working together, I'll just drag out a block for testing and I'll say, send finish line to all. And when I tap this, the sprite should do both of these pieces of code. So let's try it out. So I send finish line and okay, that worked pretty well. I think it just made me to repeat a few more times. See how that looks. You might have to play around with it a bit. Okay, I think that's pretty perfect. Oh, and you know, I should layer this sprite behind all the other sprites because, you know, it's underneath them on the road. So let's just try that all out. So I'm, you know, driving along and the time is counting up and I'm gonna try to avoid these cars and collect the coins. And then the finish line appears. Okay, nice. And I think our ending to the game just needs two more things. One, let's make all these cars and items stop moving. And two, let's have it say finish and maybe play a sound effect. So to make all these sprites stop moving, we can make the finish line send out a message end race when it gets to the bottom of the screen. And we can go to a sprite like the coin that we want to stop moving when the race ends. And we can say 
when I receive end race, stop other scripts. And that will make it stop any other code that's running in this sprite like this stack. So let's just test that out with the coin. And there we go. When the player reaches the finish line, the coin stops all its code and stays in place. And then to give this same code to all the other sprites that are moving during the race, you just have to long press on it and tap copy script to. And I'll give that to the player's car, the stripe, and both of the other cars on the road. So let's just try that out. Everything's moving, there's the finish line, and now the game comes to a stop. And as the last thing, let's make it say, you know, finish. So I will go to one of the sprites, like maybe I'll go to the main car sprite. And so after I say when end race received and stop other scripts, I could make it, actually I'll use this same font, I'll duplicate this block, I'll make it text finish, and also how about I'll make it play a sound. So actually I'll drag that sound block on top and maybe I'll pick the arcade sound because I feel like that works pretty well. And I will tap play sound and continue. And let's try that out. So I'm racing along, get the coin, avoiding the car, grabbing coins, and finish. There you go. That's how you can make a timed race game. In the later parts of this series, I'll show more things like how to make it multiplayer or let the player customize their car. But for now, I hope you have fun making your race games, and I'll see you in the next video.